my morning ritual kind of centers around this whole aging backwards, aging well mindset that I have. And it also really helps me with my confidence and just getting my day started in the right way. So today I'm gonna to share with you what I do, and if anything really sticks out to you in your mind, if it's something just clicks, keep that and just leave the rest. Only sticks with what resonates with you. Hi, my name is Lauren O'Connell, and I am the beauty editor at Cosmopolitan Middle East Magazine. I'm also a wellness, spiritual beauty blogger, and I have a website called planetlauren.com, and I have my kids at school right now, so the house is nice and quiet. As soon as they come home, it is chaos. Actually, my son is like the Pied Piper. We live in a community with lots of kids, so I know in about an hour's time, there are probably going to be around 10, 11 year old boys in my downstairs, playing video games, watching shows, and eating things I definitely don't want them eating. So this morning I wanted to share with you my, my morning ritual. And if I don't do it in the morning, my day is completely off kilter. It would almost be as if I didn't brush my teeth in the morning. It only takes me a couple of minutes to brush my teeth. And if I don't do it, I will spend so many minutes throughout the day thinking to myself, why wouldn't I brush my teeth? Does my breath smell? My teeth feel weird. This is horrible. Why didn't I do this? It's kind of the same thing. So for my morning ritual, I would say is an absolute necessity for me. Now I have a unique situation in that I work from home. So I have the luxury of sending my kids off to school and then really getting into that me time. If I didn't have that, I would just try my best to pivot this morning routine in a way that suits my schedule. So keep in mind that I'm very aware that not everybody has the same type of morning, but if you can, if you want to, you can infuse elements of this routine and make one for yourself, make it your own. So in the morning, first thing I do actually is I light candles. I love just the ritual of lighting candles. There's something so beautiful and romantic about the candle glow. It puts a really nice glow on my ceiling and I have infused these candles with intentions. So to do that, what I what I do is I'll take a candle. It doesn't need to be an expensive one. You can find one that suits your budget. You by no means need a luxury candle, but just take a candle that is fresh and think of what you want to bring into your life when this candle is lit. For example, that candle right here, my son actually gave that to me for Christmas. That is to bring light into all areas of my life. Just positive, wonderful experiences, abundance, and all forms that serve my highest good. So I light that candle and I say to myself, uh, well, initially when I programmed that candle, I just said to myself, when I light this candle, this candle flame brings light to me in all areas of my life. So in the morning when I light that candle, I just say to myself, I, Lauren, bring abundance to me, or I'm sorry, I, Lauren, bring light to me in all areas of my life. You can do this for finances, you can do it for love, you can do it for great experiences. I also always have a candle that I'll light and I've infused this candle with this intention to uh, give, give light to anyone who needs it. So for example, today, a girlfriend of mine, we were supposed to meet up in the morning to go on a walk and she said she couldn't go because her son was uh, vomiting. And so I lit, I told her I'll light my candle for you. And I did. And it's just to give him some healing white light. And I do always have a candle for that as well, because I find that people like, <clears throat> not that they like, but they'll tell me that they're having some sort of issue. So it's my way of, you know, giving something energetically to them to assist them on in whatever issue that they're having. So you can light a candle to, if you're looking for a new job, to have job opportunities come to you that serve your highest good, to have to meet someone special that will serve your highest good. Just always use a phrase, serves my highest good. And that way you're making sure that whatever comes to you is 
the best for you. So I love to light my candles in the morning and then I'll get my kids going. I'll do my morning skincare routine, which I have a video on that, what I use. I'm all about the ingredients and using just the right products on my skin. It's made a huge difference in my life and that's a big part of why I say it's aging backwards. It's because uh, my skin just looks better now at 40 than it did when I was in my early 20s. And that's really just from researching and educating myself on what the right ingredients are to use in products. So I do my morning skincare routine and while I'm doing that, I just think of, I try to, my mind sometimes is a bit like a, a bit scatterbrained, a bit of a monkey mind. <laughs> I'm all over the place, maybe like a giant octopus with tentacles everywhere. But I, I just think to myself what kind of day I wanna have, what I have coming up during the day as I'm, this is me washing my face. And I just think to myself, okay, I'm going to, you know, work really hard today. I'm going to accomplish these goals I have today. I'm going to make time for myself today. I'm going to connect with my husband today, you know, whatever it is. And I just do that while I'm doing my morning skincare routine. That takes me all of five minutes. So then comes the, in my opinion, the fun part. I love to, first and foremost, let me back that up. I always on my computer, my computer's out, it's on my bed right now. I'm always on my computer and sadly my bed is my desk. So I'm always sitting on my bed working, but I listen to high frequency music. You can find them on YouTube. There's so many different uh, YouTube channels that have various high frequency music and it's just background music. It's really pleasant to listen to. You can find ones to open your third eye, to become more intuitive, to bring healing to your body, to just connect with your higher self, to raise your own frequency. A lot of times the music that we actually hear on the radio, it's the frequency of it does not make us actually feel more boosted. It might You might feel a song or like a song and think, oh, this is such a great song, but it's not actually doing anything good for your mind, body, soul. The high frequency music is designed to really heal our bodies. And that's something that we're not really taught at all. And, you know, we are just sort of conditioned to listen to what's on the radio or whoever the pop stars are. But the high frequency music is the one that's best suited for our bodies and our minds and our souls. So, <laughs> so I listen to high frequency music all the time and I'll put a few of my favorites down below in the description box. I mean, they're free to listen to and they really do boost my mood. And I notice that when I put it on, when my puppy is around, he just gets so zen and he's, he just loves it. So my daughter, if when she's hanging out with him in her room, she'll put that music on for her, for the puppy as well, which is really cute. So anyways, I have that music going and then I start to meditate. And meditating is something I never did up until I had my own spiritual awakening when I was 35 years old. I thought meditating was kind of, you know, hmm, that sort of thing. And I didn't realize that it's really just this incredible way to connect deeply with yourself. The problem for me was I had never met myself. I always was living my life, as I've said previously, in the way that I thought other people would perceive me best. I was always worried about what everyone else was thinking about me and that's who I was. And that's because I was raised to think that way. And I just didn't have a an anchor, a connection to who I really am, what I like, what I want to do in my life. And, you know, I just, I was very, I was kind of letting myself be guided by my own perceptions of what other people thought of me, which is ridiculous. But I did that up until I was 35 years old. I still had a voice. I still did things I wanted to do, but I always just had this sort of film around me, this veil around me, and it was a veil of self-doubt. And it took me a long time to really work through that. But meditating was one of the ways I did it. So initially I would go to different spiritual centers because I had no idea what meditating even was or how to do it. And I would go to these classes, these meditation classes, and I would meditate with them and I was taught how to do it. Then I realized that I could actually meditate for free on YouTube. And as a mom of two, uh, you know, I live on a budget and the meditations were expensive and it's cheaper for me to just do it online. So that's what I did. Oh, 
You're already home? Oh, hi. My daughter's already home. Oh gosh. That, you know what I'm saying now? The house is gonna get Hello. loud. Here she is. All right, let me just finish my YouTube video. I'll be out in two seconds. Huh? Yeah, I'm gonna go out. So, uh, sorry about that. So, uh, I started doing meditations on YouTube. What I'm getting to with this, it's a bit long-winded, I apologize, but is that if you don't know how to meditate, there are wonderful guided meditations on YouTube, and that's the best place to start. Put on your headphones and just listen to a YouTube guided meditation. I'll link a few of my favorite favorites that I used to use when I did guided meditations below and just see what clicks with you. Explore, have fun with it. It's a wonderful experience. So now at this point in my life, I will just meditate on my own. I sit on my bed and I'm just wearing comfy clothes. Usually I'm still in my pajamas and I just let myself really go in. And I do it every morning for about 10 minutes, sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less. It just depends on what my day looks like. After I meditate, I journal. Now I've written a book, it's called Manifest Like Lauren. And in that book, I have actually my whole, a journal prompt that you can follow along on your own if you want to. That book is in the description box as well. It's only $29. It's 30 pages long and it instantly downloads to any of your devices. It's fun to read too. But I journal every morning. I really like to use journals that have the, um, I don't know what this is called, but this thing up here. So the binder, I guess. So it's easier for me to write. Now, without showing you what I've written, then when I write, I can just have, you know, the full page without having to flip the journal over this way. Although I guess it would work this way, but you know how some of the notebooks, it's just hard to write on the other side. So I've found that I really like the top binded notebooks, but then I just write a, a list of, uh, I do my daily journal. So when I do write it, sorry, when I write it, I first write dear universe. Now for me, I always think of the higher power as the universe or source energy or spirit. If you're religious, you could write anything to whichever God that you worship, whether you're Muslim, Hindu, Christian, whatever you are, and basically I first start with what I'm grateful for because you know, having that attitude of gratitude is so empowering and it only brings more abundance into your life. And for a long time, I always felt like only the bad things happened to me. I would see everyone living out their dream lives. I would see friends and I was always happy for them, but I would see wonderful things happen to everybody. And I always felt like, ah, oh, why do the bad things only happen to me? I didn't realize at the time that number one, I never practiced gratitude. And number two, when you think about negative thoughts, when you think, and it's not bad to have a negative thought, but when you're constantly in this mindset that, oh, everything bad happens to me, guess what? Everything bad is going to happen to you. So really through meditating and journaling, I've worked through this and now I'm in a place where I just constantly receive beautiful experiences, friendships, people, everything into my life and I attract it to me. I really worked on my mindset. And once again, that was through inner child healing, through a lot of working on my confidence and you know, just that self doubt that I was plagued with. So I then finish my journaling and I'm sorry, let me finish that. So I talk about, I just say my general, I say like, thank you for my lessons and my blessings. Thank you for the health that I'm experiencing in my life. And then I'll write three things that I'm particularly grateful at this moment in time. So it could be anything that's silly. It could be, you know, I ate a delicious muffin this morning, or it could be, I'm really grateful for the love that my husband gives me and the support. Or it could be a friend that I'm grateful for. It could be anything. It could be the glass of water next to me. And, or it could be something really deep. I'm grateful that I had this, uh, this revelation yesterday that I actually don't have to say yes to everything that comes my way. I can say no. Thank you for this. You know, it, these types of things. And the more that you do it, just the more fun it becomes because all of a sudden you realize, oh yeah, that happened and that was really awesome. I'm so glad that happened to me. You become more present in your own life and instead of just reacting to everything, you're kind of being more active, if that makes sense. You know, you're living life for you. And 
Then I go into what I'm manifesting and I usually we'll do three, just three things I want to manifest into my life. And you always want to write these in positive ways and as if it's already happening. And I go through all of this in my book. If this is a little bit over your head and you're interested in it, if it's really resonating with you, I suggest you may think about purchasing my book because I really go through and break down everything and explain it. But I just talk about, you know, I've, oh, I'll write about what I want to manifest into my life. I you know, I, I, Lauren, um, open, or uh, what will I say? I will say, um, I open myself to receiving, oh, no, I'm sorry. Let me start that over again. I open myself to attracting people and opportunities that will help me advance in areas of my career with ease, grace, and joy. Or I open myself to meeting a new friend who can really meet me on a deep level or guide me through this own spiritual awakening I'm having right now. Or I open myself to meeting a teacher that can guide me. I open myself to trying out yoga and please send a yoga class my way. You know, anything like that, whatever comes to your mind. I mean, and you can have fun with it. I open my, or I'm manifesting a, a bouquet of flowers. I ask that a bouquet of flowers comes to me in whichever way. You always want to let go of how things happen and just be open to them coming whichever way they come. And you will start to have fun with it the more you play around with it and you'll realize that the universe is always going to give back to you what you put out there. Just be open to how it comes. So I'll do my, my journaling. That takes me all of 10 minutes. And then I just feel so ready for my day and I'm ready to start my day. And that's my morning ritual. After that, I end up having just usually a great day. Even if it's not great, I'm grounded and I'm centered so I just can handle problems so much better. I don't magnify them. I'm able to really just look at the situation for what it is and just adapt to it handle it as necessary and move on. And it has done so much for my self-esteem, for my confidence. And it's also, I feel that I'm a great role model for my children. So I am actually off to lunch right now. One of the things I was manifesting was just to really make time for my friendships this year. I tend to get very wrapped up in my career and I just forget everything else. Not my kids, but everything else. So I become more reactionary. I'll only go out when a friend asks me to go out, that type of thing. So now I've decided to be more proactive and I messaged one of my girlfriends, asked her if she wanted to go out to lunch. She said, of course, so we're gonna go meet. Actually, funny story, I thought we were meeting yesterday and so I was all ready to go and then I realized it was today, but I double checked with her and she's like, you're really eager to see me, aren't you? And I said, yeah, I am. I just can't wait. <laughs> so I know she's going to give me a little bit of a hard time with that today. So I hope you enjoyed my morning rituals and by all means, just take whatever resonates with you, leave the rest. And if you are wondering what my morning skincare routine is, I have it right here.